What does it mean to be visually intelligent? It's probably a good question. What does it mean for humans to be visually intelligent? Let me wake you up with the cognitive experiment right here, right now. So this is something I did when I was almost graduating from uh, grad school. Um, as a human subject, if you um, sign up for my experiment, I'll place you in, t uh, in front of a computer. Uh, you'll be instructed to stare at the center of the computer. And then what happens is that uh, real world pictures, photos, will pop up and quickly be masked by something like a wallpaper looking um, graphics just to erase that from the signal from your retina. Your job is to write down everything you've seen. And uh, I try to pay you enough so you feel motivated to write it. <laughs> so uh, let's just give it a try. I'm not going to ask you to write it, but look at each photo and just tell yourself that what do you see, what the story is. I think most of you see interesting pictures. You probably you've never seen these pictures before, yet you have no problem telling what the content of the pictures are. More re remarkably, these pictures are flashed really, really fast. Some of them are flashed about 40 milliseconds. That is 1 25th of a second. Yet your human visual system can comprehend these the content of the picture and tell the story. In fact, this is what we found as well. So we showed this particular picture to a number of subjects, and we vary the presentation time. By 500 milliseconds, that's literally a split of a second, one half of a second, humans can write novels, depending on how much you pay them. <laughs> so in this case, the subject writes that this is some kind of game or fight, two groups of two men counting the number of objects, one in the foreground was getting a fist in the face, outdoor because I see grass, maybe lines on the grass, making some mistakes here. That's why I think of a game, a rough game, emotion coming in, and more, the more like rugby than football, and so on. So while we're celebrating the advance of AI and computer vision, I want to just say this. No computer today can do what humans can effortlessly do. We are very, very far from telling that story of what we see. This is really a figure that wakes me up every day and makes me excited to go to work. My dream with my students in our lab is to one day develop algorithms and enable computers to be able to tell that kind of story of the visual world that humans can. Not just to put a label, this is a cat or a chair but really to understand what we see. And of course, I'm preaching to the choir here, if we generally can enable computers to see as well as humans or even be beyond the human capability, we can help so many different aspects of our society. In fact, computer vision is already helping much of the society, but there's just so much more to come if we solve the problem of vision. So where did all this begin? Computer vision as a field has a good birth story. And the good birth story comes in the summer of 1969. The field of AI was already born, had a few years of good development. The founding fathers of AI are thinking really hard about big problems. And a professor, ambitious professor with a group of ambitious undergrads at MIT had decided in the summer of 1966 they'll solve vision. So that was the Summer Vision Project, is an attempt to use our summer workers effectively in the construction of a significant part of a visual system. So I know MIT has very smart students, but they didn't solve vision that summer. <laughs> in fact, it's been 50 years, we're still on the quest for visual intelligence. Why is vision so hard? Why did we miscalculate how hard the problem is? Part of it is because it's just so effortless for ourselves. You open the eyes, you see the world, you understand what's going on, you do what you need to do. But the bottom line is measuring pixels 
is very, very different from understanding the scene. And this is the, the, the uh, task that our brain has solved. So here is a very typical visual illusion to illustrate this concept. This is a famous monster illusion that everybody has seen before. You know they're the same monsters. They're the pixel copies of each other. But your brain can tell the story of a big monster chasing after a small monster. And the big monster has a very fierce look on his uh, face, and the little monster looked scared. This is the difference between measuring pixels and understanding what we see. In fact, Plato has figured it out, as he figured out everything else. Many, many thousands of years ago, Plato already um, made an analogy of the task of vision is like these prisoners in the allegory of the cave. The prisoners are tied on the chairs, forced to look ahead on a, on a wall, and on the wall is the projection of a real world play behind the prisoners, and the real world is in 3D and all this, and then a story is happening. And the prisoner's task is to be able to figure out the story behind them by seeing that the shadowed projection. And this is what you and I all did. Evolution has solved this. The visual world is projected from a 3D world onto our 2D retina. But we can infer what the real 3D world is. And computers, when they need to achieve and do this in order to really understand vision. So the rest of the talk, I want to share with you very quickly a journey the field of computer vision has taken, especially my personal journey in this field. Uh, before that, I do want to uh, you know, assure you we made a lot of progress. It is a hard problem, but even today, you're using daily products that are a result of uh, great progress in computer vision, such as Google Street View, Microsoft Photosynth, you know, um, the Kinect and Xbox, uh, face recognition on your smartphones and digital cameras. So computer vision has done a lot of exciting things. But what about just telling what this is? Take a picture of this on your cell phone and ask, what object do I see? This seems to be a really simple problem humans can solve. Some of you probably recognize what this object is, especially if you're from Australia. What do you think Google think it is? It's a brown blob against the red background. So you might say, oh, this is weird. This, this is an animal I've never seen. It's a wombat for your information. Well, this is easy. It's a coffee mug that all of us see, but Google thinks it's an orange blob against a light brown or, or yellow background. So even the problem of object recognition, something that's so innate to human vision, we have not solved it. So the, the rest of the talk, the journey is just going to be focusing on object recognition as a way to talk about computer vision. So let me just define object recognition for those of you who don't work in this field. One simple definition is give you a picture. Object recognition algorithm would label this as a wombat. Not only this picture as a wombat, all of these as wombat, even though the wombat can be occluded, can be in different shape, can be camouflaged, can be cluttered. Or you have to take the camera 360 degree or more and still be able to tell this is a wombat. So object recognition is not an easy task. So I'm going to put forth my claim of the day. I believe to solve the problem of object recognition or computer vision at large, we need to have three secret ingredients coming together to make this possible. And these secret ingredients are data, learning, and knowledge.